Good evening and welcome back everyone to our Options Education webinar series. My name is Tony Zhang, I'm the Chief Strategist here at Options Play. And welcome back to part two of our Beginner Options Master Course where we're gonna be talking about how to apply the things that we've learned in part one about, how to, about call and put options, the difference between buying and selling options, and showing you how to actually apply it to some real live trading for your portfolio. Now, for those of you that joined us a couple of weeks ago where we talked about how to utilize options to add yield to your portfolio, we predominantly covered strategies that allow you to sell options, selling cover calls on stock positions that you own and selling cash secured puts on stocks that you want to own. But today what we're going to do is we're going to cover how you can utilize options to add leverage to your portfolio by buying calls and puts and talking about the nuances of buying calls and puts. What are the challenges for those strategies? What are the benefits? And then more importantly, how can we utilize the combination of buying and selling options that can enhance the leverage ratio that we're gonna receive, reduce our risk, and hopefully increase our probability of success on each individual trade. So that's what we're gonna go over here today. Now, before I go ahead and get started here, just a quick disclaimer. What we're gonna discuss here is today is purely for educational purposes and is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. As part of this partnership that Options Play and NASDAQ have partnered up with and starting in 2019, is to provide all users with access to the tools that I'll be showing you here today, the education, the different reports and trade ideas that we send out every single week, completely free of charge to you. All you have to do is sign up using the link here on your screen at optionsplay.se, which I will post into the chat window for those of you that are brand new to options trading or in the learning process and you want to take advantage of these tools that we have created to allow you to learn how to trade options. Now, just with a quick show of hands, if you can, everyone can bring up your chat window at the bottom of your screen. If you can bring up your chat window and please type yes into the chat window if you can hear me loud and clear on this particular trade. Okay, perfect. I see a lot of yeses. Now, before we get started, I just want to get a quick um, sense of the audience here in the room. So I have a, a poll up here. If you could please answer it. What is your options trading experience? You know, are you brand new to options trading? Are you learning? Do you have some experience trading options? I just want to get a sense for the audience here in the room before we go ahead and kick off. Um, so it seems like so far we have a pretty decent split between the groups here in terms of, you know, experience. It seems like a decent number of you have, uh, are brand new or just learning. About half of you are brand new and just learning. And uh, the other half of you have some experience or, or you're an experienced options trader. So today's topic is really going to cover both. We're going to cover for if you're brand new to options trading, how you can get started with a simple strategy of buying calls and puts. And then for those of you that have a bit more experience, I want to show you uh, the the more advanced strategies that you can utilize in your, in your um, trading to help you enhance and reduce your risk, increase your leverage ratio on each individual trade. And for those of you that are brand new and you say that I'm not ready to trade these complex strategies, I'm not ready to trade you know, something more advanced yet, I'm just, getting, uh, I'm just learning the basics, it's okay. The reason that we want, still want you to go through this education is so that you can understand at the end of your options education, what do you have to look forward to? We tend to find that a lot of beginners, you know, the, the process for learning how to trade options sometimes can be a little frustrating. So it's really good to also understand what's at the end of it. Um, what, what do you get out of all of this? So hopefully today inspires you to consider taking a look at options education a little bit um, with a little bit more optimism because you understand at the end of all of this what you'll be able to receive. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, we're going to cover a couple of different things, but today we're predominantly talking about how to add leverage to your portfolio. Now, whenever we talk about leverage, typically we see this as a double-edged sword, meaning if you get the leverage, if you get the direction uh, correct, leverage can work in your favor. But if you get the direction wrong, leverage can really hurt your portfolio. So a lot of people are afraid of leverage for the risk factor. So today we want to show you how you can add leverage 
but do so in a way with limited risk utilizing options. Now, for those of you that are experienced in options traders, you're familiar with the concept of buying calls and puts as a way to get leverage, but do so in a way with limited risk. Today, we're gonna just discuss these two strategies in detail so that we truly understand what are the benefits, but also what are the challenges with trading calls and puts. Once we understand those challenges, I want to show you how you can in overcome some of those challenges by tr transitioning your strategies to a debit vertical spread, which is a combination of buying and selling options at the same time. And for those of you that are brand new to options trading, I want to do an introduction on option Greeks. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what those are when we get to it, but predominantly the reason that we want to explore the Greeks is because most traders are afraid of options from the risk perspective. So we want to show you how you can define your risk by talking about uh, the, the different factors that influence the value of your option so that you understand when you enter an option contract, what is going to affect the price of that option contract. That's what we're going to explore the Greeks for. And then lastly, what we'll do is we'll explore some strategies using options play. So we want to show you how we apply what we've learned here today on some real symbols that you can utilize in your portfolio. And then what we're gonna do, this, so this is part two of a three-part series. And in a couple of weeks on April 29th, we're gonna do a live market analysis session. The live market analysis session is really designed to allow you to take everything we've learned from the previous week, from this week, and apply it in the real markets. So I'm going to give you a taste of that today, but next in a couple of weeks, we're going to spend just our time applying it on the real markets. And then you can ask questions. You can submit some symbols that you want us to take a look at together. We can pull up some strategies, pull up some symbols together, analyze it, show you how we would go about trading options using those symbols, and then give you a forum to ask any additional questions that you might have. So that's what we're going to cover here today and excited to see some of you here joining us in a couple of weeks. Um, um, let's start off by talking about stock trading. And the only reason that I'm bringing up stock trading is because many times, you know, when we talk about option strategies, we talk about bullish strategies and we talk about bearish strategies. And I think this for most people means pretty simple, right? A bullish strategy is a strategy that makes money if the stock goes higher and a bearish strategy is a strategy that makes money if the stock goes lower. It's a simple, it's a simple thing to understand. However, what I want to make clear is that when we refer to bullish and bearish, it truly only applies to stocks because what I'm going to show you in a few minutes with, with options is that bullish and bearish are not exactly the way we define it as a stock trader. So the reason that we call stock trading pure bullish and bearish exposure is because both of these strategies, buying the stock and shorting the stock, give you immediate gains if the stock moves in the direction that you expect it to. Meaning if you buy the stock, and the stock goes up by a single crown, you start making a crown. If the stock goes down by a crown, you lose a crown. So it's really simple. It's symmetrical exposure. It's easy to understand. Most of you probably are familiar with trading stocks. And, and just a quick show of hands, uh, please bring up your chat window. If you currently trade stocks or ETFs, please type S into the chat window. If you currently trade stocks or ETFs. Okay, I see a bunch of S's, so great. Um, and so you guys are familiar with this strategy and it's a strategy that, that's very easy to understand. And the, and the second the stock goes in your favor, you start making money. The second the stock goes against you, you start losing money. So that's a simple part to understand. But when it comes to options, it's not as clear cut, which is why I wanted to even go over the, the, what stock trading looks like. So now let's talk a little bit about the same stock stock XYZ, and I purposely tr pick the stock that's currently trading roughly at around 100 crowns. And just for even numbers, it's easier to uh, work with, an, with a stock that's trading around 100 crowns. So let's say in this particular case, I have a stock, it's declined a, a, a huge amount from this 125 level down to about 87 and a half. It's now bounced higher up to uh, 100. And I think that this stock is going to continue moving higher, maybe up to the, let's say, 110 level where that 50-day moving average is. Um, and you're saying, I want bullish exposure. I want to go long the stock and I want to make money if this stock goes higher. So for those of you that answer that you're brand new to options trading, you might have learned, and for those of you that have experienced trading options, you will know that trading, a, a, when you have a bullish view on a stock, what you can do is you can buy a call option. Now, call option is what we consider a bullish strategy. However, 
as for those of you that took our previous course on the differences between buying versus selling options, we made it clear that buying a call option to call it a bullish strategy is not 100% fair because it's bullish by a certain amount is, is what I believe is the true meaning of what a call strategy is. Now, what do I mean by that? So in this particular example, let's say I'm bullish and I buy a 100 crown call option, the at the money call options, the, the strike price of the same as the current stock price. Now, how bullish do I have to be to buy that call option? Well, that depends on how much the call options cost. You know, you can't just be bullish on the stock. You have to be bullish by a certain amount. And that amount is dictated by how much the call options cost. So in this particular case, if the call option costs four crowns, then my break-even price, meaning the price at which I make money on this particular strategy, is 104 crowns. The strike price plus the amount that I pay for that call option tells me how much does the stock need to move in order for me to be profitable. So what that means is that not only do I have to be bullish on the stock, I have to believe this stock is going to move at least 4% higher just for me to break even. What that means is that if the stock moves 4%, I don't make any money. I actually just break even. So what I need to have is a stock to move to 105, 106, 107, or more in order for me to be profitable. So now that's a very different scenario to be in to say, I think the stock's going to go higher versus to say, I think the stock is going to move 4% or more. Those are two very different things. And I hope everyone understands that. So please type one into the chat window. If that makes sense to you, the, the difference between buying a call option versus just saying that I'm bullish on a stock type one, if that makes sense to you. Okay, because that's once you understand that, you've overcome one of the hardest things to learn about options trading is understanding the true difference between saying I'm bullish versus saying I want to buy a call option. So in this particular case, you have to go back to the drawing board. You have to look at how much the call options cost. And then you have to say, do I think this stock is going to move up to 105, 106, 107, 108? If you think it's going to continue moving higher, then it makes sense to buy a call option. And the benefit here is that you are effectively controlling a stock that currently costs you 100 crowns a share to buy for only four crowns. So that is the benefit of trading uh, the call option. So what you're getting is implied leverage. Your leverage ratio is roughly a 25 to one because you're controlling a 100 crown stock for just four crowns. And your risk here is completely limited to the four crowns that you, that you um, uh, purchased on the call option. What that means is that let's just say you believe this stock is going to go higher and you buy that call option. But instead of going higher, the stock plummets. Let's say the let's say you know something really bad happens like the coronavirus and the stock plummets from 100 to 50 crowns. What happens if you bought the stock is you would lose 50 crowns per share. Then the call option you only risk four crowns. So that's the limited risk part that we're referring to when you're buying a call option is that no matter what happens, the most you lose is what you pay for that call option. The upside is that you still participate in unlimited upside. So if the stock was to rise, let's say um, from 100 crowns to 100, whoops, from 100 crowns to let's say 120 crowns, you'll make even more money. If it goes to 130, you'll even make more and more money. So what you're really doing is you're leveraging your capital so that if you're right, you get to have unlimited upside. But if you're wrong, you're only limited to a very a fairly small loss here, four crowns per share, roughly 4% of the underlying stock price. So that's the, that's the trade-off that you're really making when you're trading a call option is that you are getting this a huge amount of leverage on your capital. You're limiting your losses to only 4%. But, but the trade-off here is that it requires the stock to move at least 4% in order for you to be profitable. And that is the challenge with respect to buying a call option. And sometimes you might say, I'm bullish on the stock. Let me go buy a call option. And you see that the call option, instead of costing four crowns, maybe this costs 10 crowns. Now, if this, stock, if this call option costs 10 crowns, now you have to ask yourself, do I think the stock is going to move all the way up to 110 or higher in order for it to make sense? And if you say, I think it's just going to go up to 110, then guess what? It doesn't make sense to buy this call option, despite the fact that you think the stock is going to rally 10% because the call option costs you 10% of the underlying stock price. Now, I want to make sure everyone understands that. So please type two into the chat window if that makes sense to you.
Okay, perfect. Great. I see a lot of twos. That is exactly what I'm looking for. So now if this makes sense to you, now what we want to talk about is how do we actually go about, um, since, since the challenge here is the fact that the stock needs to move 4% just for you to break even, then, you know, there might be, there might be many scenarios where you might say that, well, you know, I think it'll move four or 5%, but not my, not by more than that. Right. So if the stock was to, let's say, uh, go from 100 to 105, Let's say you pay four crowns for this call option and you think the stock is going to go from 100 to 105. How much money do you make on expiration for this particular strategy? If any of you know the answer to that question, please type into the chat window. How much money do you make if the stock goes from 100 to 105 and you paid $4 for this call option? Any takers? Uh, Great, I see two correct answers. The answer is one crown, correct. Because what I've done is I've made five crowns on the call option, but because I've paid four crowns for it, my net on this particular trade is one crown. So if you think about it, making one crown while risking four crowns is a return of 25%, right? Now, I'll be honest, that's not a particularly great result to, to risk four crowns to try to make one crown. If you think the stock's going to make a 5% move, I might be better off just buying the stock rather than risking four crowns to make one crown. But what I want to show you is how we can use the power of options to really enhance this particular strategy. So in the same example, stock XYZ trading at 100 crowns, I think the stock is going to move higher. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do the exact same thing before. I'm gonna buy that same 100 crown stock. I'm gonna pay four crowns for it, right? Same strategy that I talked about before, but because when I'm buying a call option, I'm paying for unlimited upside. Now, the reality is that even though I'm bullish on a stock, Chances are, I don't think the stock's going from 100 to 1,000 between now and the expiration date. There's usually a limit as far as how far I think that stock can go. So why should you pay for all that upside? Why should you pay for unlimited upside? What you're, that's what the four crowns are going for. The four crowns is giving you unlimited upside. But if you don't think it's going to go to 1,000 or even 200, why should you pay for it? And that's really where the power of options comes in because you can sell some upside away. You can actually give away the upside and collect some premium for it. So in this particular case, if I sell the 110 crown stock for one crowns, now guess what? The net that I'm paying for on this whole trade is now instead of being four crowns is now only three crowns. So what I, that means is that now the trade, instead of risking 4% of the underlying stock price, is only risking 3% of the underlying stock price. It only cost me three crowns to buy to get into the trade. So what, it, what, what happens, number one, is I've increased my leverage because now I'm controlling the same 100 crown stock for three crowns instead of four crowns. And what I've done is I've reduced the break-even price because I've only paid 3%. Now, I, now the stock only has to move 3% in my favor in order for it to be profitable. So this, this, this does a lot of things. You're decreasing your risk. You're decreasing the amount of capital that it requires to, to get into this trade. You're increasing your leverage and you're improving your probability of success because there's a higher probability the stock's gonna move 3% than 4%. So what does this all mean at the end of the day? Let's just go through that example before that we just talked about. If let's say we think the stock is gonna go from 100 to let's say 105. Before we were making one crown on that trade. Now, if the stock goes from 100 to 105, does anyone know how, many, how much we make on this particular trade if we traded the vertical instead of just buying the call option? How much money do we make if the stock goes from 100 to 105 with this vertical? Kaj has got the right number, two crowns. So. Now what you've done is you're now risking, uh, you can make potentially two crowns versus the three crowns that you've lost. So what does that return? A 66% return. So notice how we went from a 25% return to a 66% return by selling that 110 crown uh, uh, call option to reduce our risk increase our, our leverage ratio, and potentially increase the amount that we can actually trade. So, and, and that goes a, a really long way in terms of improving your performance on a trade by reducing your, the cost to get into the trade. In this particular case, from four crowns 
to three crowns, which is a 25% reduction in risk, 25% reduction in, in capital required to get into the trade, increases your returns from 25% to 66%. It's a very, very dramatic change in your, in your trading. So for those of you that are experienced in options trading and you're familiar with this type of spread, I hope that this is a refresher and reminder as to how powerful these strategies truly are. And for those of you that are brand new and learning, I hope that this example shows you just exactly how you can use the, the combination of options together to really maximize your potential return while minimizing your risk. Because now I'm only risking 3% of my trade. The only trade-off here is the fact that because I've sold off um, the 110 call, I've traded off all the gains beyond 110, meaning no matter, even if the stock goes to 130, I'm not going to make any more money beyond 110 because I've sold it for one crown. But as you can see, uh, chances of the stock going from 100 to 110, first of all, are not as high. The stock going from 110 to let's say 120 are even slimmer. So yes, I am giving away some upside in the event that the stock goes significantly higher. But if I'm able to reduce my risk substantially and able to increase my returns on 80, 90% of the time when the stock doesn't make that large return, th those returns will offset the one or two times when the stock makes a really big move and you lose out on some of those extra gains. I hope that makes sense to everyone here because that's a trade-off that you're making here when you're buying a call option versus a call spread. Now, if that makes sense, everyone, please type three into the chat window if why the debit spread will help you in improve the performance of your trades by trading a vertical spread in this particular case um, versus then just outright buying the call. And this concept can be applied to a lot of other advanced strategies. For those of you that have experienced trading, you know, the reason that we trade credit spreads, the reason we trade calendars, diagonals, you know, it's all based on this fundamental idea of buying and selling options at the same time. Even if you think about butterflies, condors, these are just combinations of debit and credit spreads. Um, it's all designed off of these fundamental building blocks. So it's important to understand the fundamentals. Once you understand it, then we can start talking about more advanced strategies uh, because they all fall under the same category um, as these type of de debit uh, or, or credit vertical spreads. So I, normally I would go through this for, you know, on the bear side, but this is ex an exact mirror image of the bullish side. So I'm just going to go through this really, really quickly. Um, so here I have stock XYZ, same stock, but now I think the stock is going to go lower. Now I think this is important to bring up simply because for those of you that all responded yes to investing in stocks or ETFs, I would imagine that most of you are only seeking bullish opportunities, meaning you're not going out there shorting stocks. You're not going to borrow a stock so that you can short sell it. So which means is that predominantly you're only seeking stocks that you think are going to move higher, meaning you're not seeking stocks that you think are going to move lower. So it's important that we think about um, you know, when you have the power of options, you can trade options, is that you can seek both types of opportunities. So in this particular market, especially in the market sell-off, where predominantly as a stock investor, you're thinking about when should I buy again? As, a, as an options trader, you can also think about, well, I think things might get more, uh, I think things might get worse. How can I take advantage of that? And that's where put options come into play. So you're expanding the potential opportunities that you have in the market by seeking also bearish opportunities as well. So let's say I have the stock, let's say you take a different view. The stock has declined roughly uh, almost 50%. It's rallied a bit and you think the stock is going to move back lower as we're currently seeing the market right now what can you do? You can buy a put option. So let's say I buy a 100 crown put. I pay four crowns for it. I have the same challenge for a put option as I do for a call option, meaning the stock now needs a 4% decline just for me to break even. So I have to go back to the drawing board and ask myself, do I think the stock's going to move 4% or lower? And if it does, then I want to make sure that I buy that put. But it depends on how much that put option costs. So if this put option, instead of costing four crowns, costs 10 crowns, then I have to ask myself, do I think the stock's going to make a 10% move down uh, or lower in order for it, to make, for, for it to make sense to buy a put option? And here, just like the call option, I'm risking only four crowns. So no matter what happens, even if the stock was to jump back to 125, I'm only risking four crowns. 
unlike shorting a stock where you truly have unlimited risk, when you buy a put option, you cannot lose more than what you paid. And you, tr and you te te technically have unlimited downside, but your maximum reward is if the stock goes to zero, you make 96 crowns in this particular case. And if the stock stays at 100 crowns or higher, you will lose the four crowns. So exact same picture as the call option, but just a mirror image to the downside. So lastly, with the put debit spread, again, same thing as the call debit spread. I'm buying that 100 crown put, paying four crowns for it. But because of the challenges of how much the stock needs to move, the amount of money that I'm putting at risk, what I can do is I can sell a, a put below and give away any downside below $90 because I don't think the stocks are gonna go significantly further below $90. So I can sell that off, collect some premium, reduce my risk, increase my leverage ratio. And what it does is it means that I have a higher probability of profit because the stock doesn't need to move as far in order for me to be profitable. And I'm only risking now three crowns as opposed to four crowns before. And the trade-off here is that instead of being able to make 96 crowns if the stock goes to zero, which I likely don't think is going to happen anyway, what I'm doing is I'm basically trading off any risk, any potential reward below 90 crowns. So my maximum gain here is just seven crowns if the stock goes down to 90. If it goes below that, I'm still just going to make seven crowns. Um, so that's the put debit spread side. So if that makes sense to you, please type four into the chat window. Like I said, that's the exact same thing as a call option, but just a reverse of the call option, just a mirror image of each other. Okay, perfect. So I see a lot of fours. Great. So let's go ahead and move on. Now that we understand the strategy, you know, one of the challenges that I think most traders have with options is understanding risk, understanding what affects the value of my call option. So in the, in the example, right, where we talk about buying a call option for four, four crowns and you ask yourself, well, what if the stock goes up 10 crowns? What if the stock goes down three crowns? What happens if the stock does X, Y, and Z? Or what affects the value of my option? And that's why we study the Greeks. Now, the Greeks, in my opinion, throw off a lot of beginners. You, you look at it, you study them, and you say, I have no idea what, what this is uh, explaining to me. So what I'm trying to do today is take a more visual approach to understanding the Greeks. I don't want to scare you off with the math. Just remember that you never have to do any of the math that I'm showing you here on this because our platform options play will actually do the math for you. So if you decide that you're going to buy, let's say a call option or, or, or a put option on H&M, Instead of having to say, well, you know, if the stock goes down by a certain amount, how much money do I lose? Our platform will actually do the math for you so that if the stock was to go down by a certain amount, we'll calculate the PL. If it goes up by a certain amount, we'll calculate the PL. And we'll actually show you how the performance of each trade will, 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 um, will perform depending on different factors in the market. But it's important to also understand this from a conceptual perspective, which is why I want to show you the, con the conceptual part, right? So first off, we're going to start up with Delta. And Delta is by far the most important Greek to understand because this is what has the largest impact on the value of your call option. So in the previous example, where we buy a call option for four crowns. The, the question is, if the stock goes up $1 or one crown, or if it goes down by one crown, how much money do I make or lose on my four crown investment? <clears throat> and that's exactly what Delta tells you. So if, if your call option has a delta of 0 0.5, which again, these are things that your trading platform will calculate for you. You don't have to do it yourself. What this is basically saying, if my, if my four crown option has a delta of 0 0.5, that's telling me that if the stock goes up or down by one crown, I should roughly receive a one, one uh, I'm sorry, a half a crown, um, um, uh, half a crown gain or loss on my particular trade. So if the stock goes up by one crown, I should expect that my four dollar four crown uh, option will be worth four fifty. Or if it goes down by a crown, it'll be going down to about three fifty. So I'm making about twelve percent gain on this particular trade if the stock goes up by one percent versus a twelve percent loss if the stock goes down by one crown. Does that make sense, everyone? Please type five into the chat window. <clears throat> now. The thing what you'll notice here on my screen is that this is what the PL chart of a, of, a, of a call option looks like. And I think many of you that have ever looked at any types of op options education, you're familiar with this 
um, with this payoff graph that looks like this. Now, what's sort of misleading about this graph is that the green line represents what your call option is worth at expiration. But when you buy a call option, let's say you buy a call option that expires in May or June, you're nowhere near, uh, you're nowhere near expiration. The value of your option actually looks some, something like this as you approach, um, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the value of a call option today, it actually looks something more like this. Um, it's a curve. And for those of you that are, um, sorry, this is not a very well-drawn curve, but it's a curve that looks something like this. Um, so basically, as the stock goes lower and lower, um, there's a limit as to how much money you can lose, but as the stock goes higher and higher, you will keep making more and more money. But the green line actually represents what the option is worth at expiration. The red line ref re um, tells you what the value of your option is today. Now, this is where it gets where people get a little thrown off here, right? So when I refer to a delta of 0.05, what that actually is, it's only true if the stock moves a little bit. Um, what happens is the stock, if the stock was to move a lot, let's say it goes from 100 to 110, your delta is actually going to increase, meaning for every dollar the stock, uh, for every crown the stock goes higher, instead of just making 50 crown, uh, 50, half a crown, you're actually gonna con continuously increase this so that if it goes from uh, 100 to 101, you'll make from here, instead of just another 50 crowns, you might make another 60 crowns. So the value of your option actually increases to let's say, instead of just the five crowns, it might be worth 5.1 crowns. And on the flip side, if the stock continues to move lower, instead of losing another 50 crowns, you might lose only 40 crowns. So <clears throat> what happens is that as the market goes in your favor, Delta actually increases, so you actually make more and more uh, per dollar that uh, per per crown that the stock was higher. And when the stock goes against you, you actually lose less and less per crown. And that's how you can get this curve, so that if, if the stock keeps going higher and higher, you keep making more and more money. And that's the leverage part that we're referring to. And if the stock goes against you, you actually lose less and less money. And that's a limited risk factor that you actually are are that that we refer to. Now. This is the part that I think confuses most traders. And this is really where it comes down to uh, gamma, which is the second derivative of options. <clears throat> and gamma, what gamma tells us is the change in delta with respect to the change in stock price. What that means is that when the stock goes from 100 crowns, one crown higher or lower, that's 50 delta, right? We said that the, your option will increase or decrease by about 50 cents, uh, fi uh, fi half a crown. If the stock starts at 110 and starts to move higher or lower, the delta is actually higher. So at this point, it'll be, let's say, 0.7. But down here, if the stock was to move significantly lower, your delta actually decreases. It might be 0.3. So basically what happens is that as the, tra as the, tra as the trade goes in your favor, you make more and more per, per, per crown that the stock moves higher. And as the stock moves lower, you lose or make less and less. Um, and that's how you get that curve. So I don't know if any of you guys here are, are engineers um, or study have studied calculus, um, but basically gamma is, this, is the convexity or the second order derivative of the curve versus delta is the first order derivative of that curve. So uh, uh, the derivative is simply just the slope, right? So the, the telling you how much this, the, the line, is, the curve is changing. Um, so the underlying stock price is your, is your uh, affects delta, and then gamma affects delta. So gamma actually increases, it increases your leverage as you get more and more right, and then actually decreases your leverage as you get more and more wrong. Um, so that's just a, you know, a way to visualize and think about how you actually get this quote unquote leverage, but also have a limited risk is all due to gamma. Da gamma increases delta as you are right and decreases de delta as you are wrong. And lastly, theta. So as we referred to before, the green line is the value of your option at expiration. But prior to expiration, like I said, the value of your option looks more like a curve like this. So what happens is that as your option approaches expiration, what's actually happening is the curve is continuously declining over time. And what it does is it turns into that green line as you approach expiration. So if you buy a, 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 um, 
<clears throat> an option for four crowns, um, every single day that, this, that it goes by, this curve starts to shift a little bit lower and it moves lower by a certain amount. And that's what theta tells us. Theta tells us how much does the value of this option decay with respect to time. So if you see a, a, a call option, let's say we have the four, call, four crown call option that we purchased, and it shows you that you have a theta of 0 0.05, what that's telling you is that this, this, this option that, you're, that you bought is losing 0 0.005 crowns per day. What that means is that let's say you buy this four, to four crown call option and a week later, the stock is still trading at 100 crowns. Nothing else has changed. The delta hasn't changed. The gamma hasn't changed. What this is telling you is that you would lose, in this particular case, uh, 0.35 crowns because five crowns multiplied by seven days in the week means that you've lost 30, uh, 0.35 crowns. So the value of your option, if the stock doesn't move in a week, erodes to 3.65 crowns. So you really have all of these different forces that are working upon the value of your call option. You, you want the stock to move higher, that's delta, and gamma will help increase the delta as it works in your favor. But at the same time, you're working against theta. So before we said that, you know, if delta is 0 0.05 and the stock moves up by one crown, you make 50, uh, 0.5 crowns, right? So if the stock goes from $4 to, uh, $4 to uh, $4.50, 4.5 crowns. That's what your delta component will, will generate in terms of profit. But what you have to do is you have to subtract the 35 crowns that you've lost time value. So if it takes a week for the stock to move up one crown, then you make 50 crowns, uh, 0.5 crowns on the delta, you lose 35 crowns on the theta. So your net result at the end of the week is 4.15 crowns. Now, this is very theoretical. Again, this is just so you understand the concept of the different things that are influencing the value of your option. Again, you don't have to know how to do this math because I know for many of you that are brand new, what I've just explained probably just confuses you. So what you need to know at the end of the day is that Options Play or platforms like Options Play do this type of calculation for you. But it's just important that you know that the stock price and time are two of the most important factors that influence how your value, how the value of your option will change. Now, for that, what I want to do is I want to jump over to Options Play and show you some examples to help you understand what you learned here today, but also show you how we calculate these Greeks for you so that you truly know what is the, the value of the option that you're purchasing at some point in the future if the stock was to go higher or lower, because that's the reason that we study the Greeks is to know how much money are we going to make or lose if the stock goes higher or lower. I'm going to use H&M here for an example. I'm going to use H&M example for if those of you that follow me on our weekly outlooks, which is every single Thursday at 5:30 p.m. Uh, so that's tomorrow at the exact same time tomorrow. Well, we do a market outlook where we discuss you know what symbols to look at. You know, last week I discussed H&M. Uh, we discussed a short trade here around that 135 level. It moved a little higher to 139, but looks like it's starting to crack lower. So let's say. I have a bearish view on H&M and I want to express that bearish view utilizing options. So the options play tool again is available to everyone free of charge. All you have to do is sign up using the link at the beginning of the webinar. I'll post it again after we finish here today. But what you can do using our tool is you can type in any symbol and you can select either I'm bullish or I'm bearish. If you select I'm bearish in this particular case because I, I want to take a bearish view, and I'll show you some, some bullish strategies as well. Uh, let's say I want to take a bearish view. I can, sell, I can sell the stock short, which is not a strategy I recommend because you have unlimited risk. I can buy a put option, which in this particular case cost me 830 crowns or 8.3 crowns per share. Or I can buy this put spread. That's the debit spread that we're talking about. So let's compare these three strategies side by side. Now, the reason that we do this, um, the reason that we provided this tool is because most of you have a brokerage account or an options trading platform that uses an options chain. And an options chain, many times, if you're a professional, might be useful, but many, many investors find that the options chain sometimes are, are difficult to navigate because you have all these strike prices, expirations, and it's hard to know exactly where do you start, right? How many of you, as a beginner, 
uh, or, or even as an experienced trader, find it difficult sometimes to navigate an options chain and know where to start. If you find it sometimes difficult or confusing, please type yes into the chat window with respect to the option chain. Now, the reason that we started this platform was because we realized that the option chain is not the best user experience. We as, as experienced traders, uh, we were sick of using these pages to constantly try to find the right starting points. We knew how to find our starting points, so we built a program that just searched for those starting points for us. And that's what you get to see here, is you get to see three strategies that we typically would use to trade a, a bearish view. We've automatically selected the expiration date. We've automatically selected the strike price. These are not necessarily the best starting points for you because you might have a different outlook than us, but these are good starting points for anyone who has a general bullish or bearish view on an underlying stock. So if you're bearish on H&M, buying a May 135 put, which is the at the money puts, the stock's trading around 134. So we're always gonna select a put option that's near the current price as a starting point. But here, as you can see here, um, so the 135s cost 8.3 crowns. The put vertical here, what I'm doing here is I'm also buying the 135 puts, paying 8.3 crowns. But again, even though I'm bearish on this trade, I, there's a limit as far as how far I think the stock can go. So it automatically selects a strike price for you, a 115 strike price, and it collects 1.6 crowns. So let's just do a couple of quick calculations, right? 8.3 crowns divided by 134 dollar 134 crown stock means that the stock needs to move roughly 6% to the downside just for me to break even on the put option. So you can go to the drawing board and say, do I think H&M is going to drop another 6% between now and May? Now H&M is down about almost 4% today. So 6% in a month you know, doesn't sound crazy, but certainly it still requires a decent move to the downside, right? Now, if we take this put vertical, which costs 6.7 crowns, so 6.7 crowns divided by 134 crowns, now it's only a 5% move. So instead of requiring a 6% move, now it only requires a 5% move because instead of just paying 8.3, I'm now paying 8.3 minus 1.6, which is 6.7 crowns. So if you look at this from a 6.7 crowns perspective, first of all, what I've done is I've reduced my risk from 800, 830 crowns to 670 crowns, which for those of you that are paying commissions, you know, that might be go, go towards paying some commissions. Not only are you reducing your risk, you're reducing your trend, um, your, your, um, your break-even rate, you're increasing your probability of profit, and let's see what does that actually do for your portfolio. So let's say the stock, is, which is currently trading at 133, falls another, I don't know, back down to let's say this 115 uh, support level, which I think that if you have a bearish view on H&M, uh, thinking that it'll, it'll revisit 115 is a fairly conservative um, target in my opinion here for this particular trade, right? So if you felt that the stock's going to go down to 115, you can use our PL simulator and say that if the stock was to go down to 115, you can select a date as far as when you think that might happen. And let's say you think it'll happen at expiration. What you're going to see is that yes, this put option gives you a very nice 141% return. That's great right? However, as you can see here on the right-hand side, if you traded the vertical, you're looking at 177% return. That's the boost that you get in terms of potential performance by reducing your risk or reducing your denominator in this particular case by roughly 20%. You're reducing your risk by 20%. You're reducing the capital outlay on that particular uh, on that particular trade. So there's, you know, if you look at any single return, right, there are two parts of a return. You have your um, you have your potential reward, right? And then you have your risk. So how can you increase your return? You can do two things. You can either increase your return, which I don't know how you go about doing it, or you can decrease your risk. And that is something you can control because you can't control where H&M stock is going to go, but you can control how much capital you lay out on this particular trade. And that's how you can increase your potential returns by reducing your risk. And this tool not only shows you what strategies to use, what starting points you can utilize, but also gives you the tools to calculate how much money do you make if you're right, but also 
let's just say the market turns around very quickly. Let's say magically we find a, a solution to the coronavirus and everyone opens up their economies back tomorrow and things go back to normal very, very quickly. And we're absolutely wrong on our bearish view and the stock shoots up to let's say 170. If that happens, if you had shorted the stock, you would be looking at a very, very large loss of 3,600 crowns per 100 shares. On the call option, a put option, 830 crowns. On the put spread, only 670 crowns. So you're risking the least amount of money to potentially make what some of the highest returns if you are correct. And let's just say you're, you're, you're bearish, but the stock doesn't move as far as you expect it to. Let's say it only moves down to 120. As you can see here, you're looking at 81% return versus 122% return. That's the magnification that you will expect from this type of strategy. Now, and if you're ready to trade that strategy, you can click on the trade button. We give you the, the details on how to enter this trade into your broker's platform. We even give you the short code for those of you that have brokerage accounts that require you to enter this this type of um, strategy using that short code so that you can quickly copy and paste that trade into your broker's platform. Um, so this is all designed from the ground up to help you select a strategy, analyze the strategy, and immediately see how you can execute that strategy at your broker firm. So flip side, I just want to take a look at one bullish example. Um, a trade that I that I talked about, you know, there's a couple of, of names that I talked about on our market uh, overview session last week. Axe food being one, grocery stores have been doing very well as, uh, you know, as people shy away from going to restaurants, um, you know, still trading just around that $200 level. The other one I was looking at is really AstraZeneca. Very strong, um, you know, pharmaceutical companies obviously are less... Um, are, are, are less susceptible to... Get to um, the coronavirus and slowdowns of, of, of the economy. So let's say perhaps, you know, and AstraZeneca is interesting because, you know, we identified 900 as a pretty strong resistance level for 900. I mean, for AstraZeneca, and it just broke out above that 900 level. So maybe this is, you know, the breakout that it needs to continue moving higher. So let's say, let's take a look at some call options here. So AstraZeneca, 956 crowns, a call option costs 46 50, 4,600 crowns. So let's just do a little, uh, again, a little bit of quick math here. So 4,650 divided by 956. This requires the stock to move 4.8% uh, to, to break even. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but AstraZeneca is a stock that doesn't move a lot. So because of that, 4.8% for AstraZeneca is actually not a small amount. So $4,600 to pay for a um, for this particular stock is actually somewhat expensive. So, you know, whenever we think about how what the percentage is, we have to think about how volatile is the underlying stock. AstraZeneca in this particular case, not a very volatile, volatile stock. So another 5% move to the upside may be a big move for this underlying stock. The puts the call spread. So here what we're doing here is we're also buying the 945 call option, but we're selling a 1050 uh, call option against it and collecting two dollars and seventy five crowns. Um, uh, 2.75 crowns. So, you know, and if you look at the midpoint versus the bid ask price, not a significant difference here, but you're really saving in this particular case, not a whole lot. So by selling the one, one uh, 1050 uh, call options, I'm only collecting 2.75 crowns out of a 46 crown call option is not that much. So what you're going to see is that I didn't reduce my risk by too much in this particular case. And this is one of the challenges that you see with trading options is that you can identify the right strategy, but sometimes the, the options just do not want to, um, uh, they, they just don't want to cooperate. So in this particular case, as you can see, if the stock does move higher, the amount of return that I'm getting is a little bit higher, but not by much because I'm not collecting much money on selling that uh, 1050 call option. If I'm collecting more money, then I would get a, a bigger reduction in risk, a higher return on my capital. Um, so be careful or, or just be aware of these things when you're structuring these types of trades. And that, this is part of why we do these, we do the education. We don't want to just throw you onto this platform and say, 
go use these strategies without understanding them. It's important that you understand how these strategies work because at the end of the day, these are, this is your money. You're risking your money. It's important that you understand how these strategies work before you apply them in your portfolio. So here's an example of a vertical that provides a little bit of benefit, but not a whole lot, at least not as much as what we saw in the H&M example. Um, and as you can see, the options play score here is, are not very good, meaning the stock needs to move a fair amount just for you to break even. And, you know, the stock really needs to move to all time highs just for you to break even. You know, the problem, it can happen, certainly it can happen, but the probability of that happening is a little, is significantly lower than, H, than in the H&M example. So H&M is a much more volatile stock for it to move 5%, much more reasonable. As you can see, the stock is down 4% today. So another 5% 5, another 5 over the next month, certainly reasonable. Here, stock needs to move 5% to break even, but the stock only moves, you know, a very small fraction of a percent per day. So keep that in mind when you're doing your trading. So with that, I want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this evening. Again, I hope that this is useful for those of you that are learning how to trade options to better understand how you can utilize these strategies for your portfolio. And we're really here to help you learn as much as possible along the way. We offer all of these um, training videos, both on um, both on uh, options play as well as on YouTube. So um, you can follow us on YouTube for those of you that want to um, get notifications of all of the type of content that we put out. I'll post a link into the chat window for those of you that want to follow our um, our YouTube channel. But we also have an education page for those of you that want to view, you know, I, I, I know I saw some of the questions about, you know, how do we access some of the education? So you can access our webinar recordings. You can access our educational courses all from this page. I both posted both the links in the chat window so you can access it. Um, and you have access to, you know, the buying versus selling options, um, uh, buying versus selling options, getting started with options. These are all pre-recorded so that you have an understanding of how to go about um, accessing our previous education, how to access the course. And for those of you that want to learn more about trading this market, uh, we do a Thursday night review um, of the markets where we go over where we currently see the markets, what our outlook of the market is. We try to share as many ideas that we have with the markets with you. Um, you can join us using the link that trade.optionsplay.com slash outlook SE. Every single Thursday, 5.30, same time today, but tomorrow we do this weekly market review. Usually lasts about 30 minutes. We talk about where the OMX S30 is trading. We talk about what themes we see. We talk about macroeconomics, and then we dive into some of the individual ideas that we see for the Nordic market. So I hope that some of you are able to join us for that as well tomorrow. And again, for those of you that do not already have access to everything that I explained to you, you can access it all free of charge and get on our mailing list by registering at optionsplay.se. So with that, I just want, that concludes what I wanted to review with you guys here today. If you have any questions, please type them into the chat window and I will answer any questions that you guys may have time for. Um, Frederica asked about where do you find all the courses? So I hope that that helped, um, helped you understand where you can access the courses through our education website. We also send this to you very, you know, every single week in your email inbox. So please look out for the emails that we send out. You know, we do Monday mornings, we do cover call reports to show you how you can generate income in your portfolio. Wednesdays and Fridays, we send trade ideas. Thursdays, we do the market outlook. So we really try to provide as much content for you guys to understand what's currently going on in the market, have access to ideas, whether you're buying, you know, speculating, whether you're selling options for premium, and really giving you as much coverage as possible, um, access to the platform and this education. Uh, and I will say, you know, you guys have access to it free of charge because NASDAQ is paying for it. So I recommend you take advantage of that as much as possible. So thank you so much. Um, if there are any questions, again, please type them to the chat window and I'll try to answer as many questions as I have time for here today. And just so you know, this webinar is recorded, so we will be sending out the recording. We will be posting on the educational site. We'll be emailing it out to everyone if you have, um, if you want to follow this along at your own pace. Um, any questions before I sign off here today?
Um, Frederica, Mickey, Tomas, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If there are no other questions, I, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this evening. I uh, really look forward to having you back here in two weeks when we go over the live market analysis. We're going to do a lot more of like the H&M and AstraZeneca examples. We're going to allow you to submit some of your symbols that you want us to take a look at. We're going to look at them together. You can say I'm bullish or bearish on a, strat on a symbol. And we'll look at some strategies together, show you how I would trade those particular setups um, and, and just show you how we would go about analyzing the security and deciding whether it's something that we would trade or not. So really looking forward to doing that event in a couple of weeks, looking forward to having you all back for that. So have a great evening. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys, and I'll see you guys tomorrow or uh, in a couple of weeks on our Thursday um, uh, live market analysis. Have a great night.